Guess what we get to break out again? The old broom. 3-0 on the morning wager yesterday. That's 10-2 for the week. It's pretty, pretty good. And the weekend's almost here, which means a dancing Mark Zinno and myself are going to give you a couple looks for Saturday in the SEC, as a matter of fact. Mark Zinno's area of the country. And yes, we will even give you a show best bet in the National Basketball Association. Uh, a game near and dear to Dan Alexander's heart. Dan producing the show for us today, doing his usual wonderful job. It is his the team uh, of his youth, his favorite team, Philadelphia, against uh, the yeah. team where he lives now, L.A., the oh, Lakers. And Dan is now saying nasty saying, things about the Sixers. Stay tuned later on for our best bet. Next he's game. saying nasty things because where he is, it's uh, 0530 or 0600, and oh, my God, it's early. Dan Alexander. It, it is early. We appreciate Dan waking up early to produce this show. Oh. Now – since so, Dan woke up early, hey, we yes. I want to talk yes. for a second. Do that. Okay, or talk. You just want to talk with your introduction and move right into the plays. I would like to sort of break my arm, patting ourselves on the back about the St. Mary's Chattanooga Mox game last night that covered by the hook. Yeah, buddy. I was excited about that. We were watching the Monday night game you and I, not together, but separately. And I kept texting. I'm like, this is going to be tight. Mox are going to kill us. Mox are going to kill us. They hung on. Way to go, St. Mary's. Where, and the crazy part is they scored 29 in the first half. You know how many points they scored in the second half? I know you shut it off because you didn't watch. Because we told you guys that you didn't have to watch after the first half. That's why we made the play. I think they scored like 45 in the second half. My God. It is insane. There we go. We, we, we got it. We told the people. They weren't at the staff late. No, I was busy texting you. Oh, I was an idiot for taking the under in the Thursday night football game. I apologize to my clients for that play. It looked good for three quarters, and then the fourth quarter happened. And, uh, you know, it's hard to win an under when both offenses just keep scoring touchdowns and not settling for field goals. 20 years of me yelling at football teams and saying, eschew the field goals, go for touchdowns. Well, guess what? That joke was on me last night because they kept scoring touchdowns. Yes, they kept scoring touchdowns. You know, as well, and this is the – the, the, the bitch of this business sometimes. So, and then thank you to the guy in the chat who told me he was the poor bastard who bought my play on the Suns two nights ago. I put a package together last night. Nobody bought it and both of them cashed. So there you go. Well, that's why you, like, you need to buy like season long stuff. Right? Yeah, so they Mark, do that Mark for promoting. Mark I'm Zitto promoting getting into the like, <laughs> concept, not a record, you douche. Okay. I'm not sitting okay, here I'm stroking sorry. myself, cutting my record. I'm saying the do concept. I, do, I, do, I get the, should I get the broom? No. Do I get the broom? No. Okay. Put we won't do that again. Down. Put it down. Okay. I'm stro- I, I'm promoting the idea of that long haul following somebody like Brian Power, following somebody like Steve Merrill or Adam Trigger, following somebody maybe like me, you know, for a variety of reasons would be in your best interest. Some of these other tool bags, I wouldn't waste your money. But, <laughs> no, come but on. Right. You know where I would follow you? I would follow you right into battle, buddy. Imagine you me should. having behind you and your I've got, yeah, that's, uh... I've got a record there than I do in sports betting. I'm undefeated. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I, I love when you, by the way, take us to the financial side of this industry. You, you open up your admin to uh, all of the viewers. That's very kind of you. And let us know who bought your pick and who did it by your pick. It's, it's incredible Listen, stuff. I, 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 I am, I'm a man of the people. I mean, I should run for president one day. I would get a lot of votes. Stephen A. Smith might run for president. You see that? That would be terrible. Like the New York <laughs> Knicks are terrible. <laughs> All right. right, let's. We're, we've got some NBA coming up, by the way. Not the Knicks, but we do have some NBA. But we're going to talk about Saturday college football first. We've got a couple picks for you here. Mark, the SEC, you know the conference very well. And all week long... You have been chirping to me that Tennessee is laying too many points to Mississippi State here. Would you like to tell the fine viewers why you think that is? Obviously, the Vol- most people know the Vols have Georgia on deck next week. Well, why don't you t- steal all my thunder in one, one sentence? Way to go. Thank you. Beyond that, that was it. Um, like, come on. Like, when this number came out on Monday, I literally screamed at Brian Parr. I'm like, get out of here. No way. Like, this is not real. That's got to be a misprint. There's no way. There is no way that Tennessee should be laying 24 and a half against Mississippi State. Look, we know how bad Mississippi State is, right? Like, I get it. Mississippi State's coming off a win against UMass. Like, that counts. But if you look at their road games, okay, this year, 
alone, they've never lost by 24 or more. They lost by seven to Arizona State. They lost by 10 to Georgia, 23 to Texas. Um, Tennessee, all right, over the course of like SEC play has become incredibly human. What did they win their first three games? 69 to 3, 51 to 10, and 71 to nothing. Oh, well, then guess what happened? Conference play started. A 10 point win over Oklahoma, a five point loss to Arkansas, an overtime win by six over Florida, a seven point win over Bama, and a 10 point win over Kentucky. In what world do they get to lay 24 and a half? Like, it's just, it's an insane number to put out there. I'm not sitting here telling you that. You should bet Mississippi State. What I'm saying is, is it's Mississippi State or pass. I would never, ever, ever lay 24 and a half with this Tennessee team and the current team that they are, given what they've played. And oh, by the way, guys, their offense hasn't scored more than 28 in a game starting SEC play, period. I get Mississippi State's defense is nowhere near as good as any of the defenses they played before. But this is just about pure numbers here. Like, you know, if Mississippi State gets to 20, are we really believing that Tennessee Ooh. is getting to 45? I just don't see the math. I don't see the math working out on the clock. I, I, you know, I mean, they're going to have to hold Mississippi State to 10 and get this thing to 40, and that's the way they cover it. But I don't see it working out that way. Give me uh, give me the Bulldogs plus the 24 and a half. Mark Zeno says, while they will probably be singing Rocky Top, Saturday evening yeah, in Knoxville. The alumni will not have extra cash in their pockets. Take the points with Mississippi State. Smash that like button if you agree there. Let's stay in the SEC. One of the biggest games of the weekend, Mark. I'm going to talk about it. Georgia and Ole Miss. Now, every time you and I have talked about this game throughout the week, I have told you that my numbers say Ole Miss is the play here. Ole Miss is the sharp side. And then I always follow that up with, I don't really know if I trust those numbers, quite frankly. Now, you look at Ole Miss, statistically, what they've done, Mark, it is very impressive. This team, okay, Lane, the old Lane train, the Rebels, they are number one in the country in yards per play margin. Number two in yards per game margin. Number two in scoring margin. That's all nationally. I think their defense, believe it or not, is the key. So th- this is what I was thinking. I, I, I'm i too scared. Georgia, you look at Georgia, they've only covered twice all season. But they're laying a real short number here. They've got a big coaching edge, I think, with Kirby Smart over Lane Kiffin. So I want to get creative in how I play this game. So what am I going to do? I'm going to play Georgia's team total under 28 and a half. This Ole Miss defense, Mark, again, Mm -hmm. statistically, is very impressive. Incredible against the run. Number one in the country in tackles for loss. Number one in the country in PBUs. That's passes broken up. And Carson Beck, okay, guy's getting it done off the field. We understand that. But on the field, he has 11 interceptions his last five games. That's a problem. And I think the Ole Ole Miss is defense. Yeah, Ole Miss's defensive line, they're going to be living in that backfield. I think Beck is going to be under duress this entire game. It does not necessarily mean Ole Miss will win, but I think the way to play this game, and I know it's scary because I think Georgia stayed under this number just one time all year, the Kentucky game, uh, which they won 13-12. to But I think we are in for a low-scoring game Saturday afternoon in Oxford, and I think the road team is not going to put up a ton of points. I thought Ole Miss would do a better job defensively against Arkansas last week. They were on the road. Here, they're at home. It's under 28 and a half, man. That's my play. Georgia, team total under. That's what I think. Thoughts? Uh, look, I'm with you. I I, I saw one, uh, fo- one person in the betting industry talk about how much money was coming in on Georgia, that it was clearly the, the public side uh, with all the money coming in, and yet odds makers are holding it two and a half. Folks, when you mm-hmm. see that, it should tell you something. When, when, when books are heavily, heavily leveraged on one side and they refuse to move off a number, especially to a key number, that should tell you all you need to know about which side the bookmakers feel is the right side in here, and that's Ole Miss. 
I, I uh, neglected to mention this. There are some injury concerns on the Ole Miss uh, offensive side of the ball. That's another reason why I'm kind of backing away from taking them as a home dog, despite what you just laid out, that Ole Miss unde- – the books are going to need Ole Miss tomorrow afternoon, yes. no doubt about it. But I, sure. I just think the best way to play it, you want to get creative, is that Georgia team total under. All right, uh, that is our two – that's our double play for Saturday, college football. I do have a total up tonight – uh, for Friday college football. It's a very Brian Power esque play, I'll tell you that. Again, very disappointed in last night's NFL over under loss. I had that work out last night. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it did it. It did look, it didn't work out, did it? All right. Yes, I deserve to oh, die. And I hope I burn in hell. All right. Did you have Hold on a second. Hold on. I, I, you, you asked me last night to tell everybody something on the morning wager. Oh, and I have oh, to fulfill no. my duties here. A text from Brian Power. I demand to be called the worst handicapper in the business tomorrow on the morning wager. So, Brian Power, you are the worst handicapper in the business. I just wanted to fulfill my co-host duties as your friend, as your confidant, as a as, as a pal, as a colleague. You are the worst handicapper in the business right here. But still, buy his happy. package because his Bundesliga record is fantastic. He's still number one in college football. And, oh, by the way, he's number two in the NFL. Blah, 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 blah. No one rage texts better than me, I think. You know, I look like a very pleasant person, I think. You look at me right now, you're like, what a nice guy this guy must be, Brian Parr. You know, he just shows up, until very professional. Yelling, until you start yelling things, <laughs> profanity about rally burgers at, at uh, Progressive Field. <laughs> yes, there's that. Well, that turned out well, at least. I mean, I was berating myself via text to you last night. Didn't help. Touchdowns there kept coming. There you go. There you go. That's me, right? That, that, that's, that was me in the fourth quarter at some point when – Jamar Chase was running wild, and there was 18 80-yard passes in the fourth quarter. That yeah, was me was right there. That was bad. That was bad. We need a better result right there on the screen. For a game that was, for a game that was yeah. 7-7 with a minute left in the first half, it should have never went down that way. No, it shouldn't have. It, it shouldn't have. It was disgusting. And yes, my God, Dan defense, Alexander now down. mocking me. Dan Alexander chirping in our ears. You idiot. <laughs> Worst pass defense Damn. in the league, and Brian Power goes under. The man, you have I'm no fear. Yeah. No, I know. Listen again: seven and seven game with a minute left in the first half. Like it looked you good. Couldn't have asked for a better game script than that. Should have played the under in the first half. Yeah. No, well, listen. Yes. You know what I, I said. Should have. Should, you, know what? Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah. You know what? I didn't stand yeah, late you know except last night. <laughs> yeah, you know what? If I ate better, I'd have six pack abs too. But you know, that's a different story for a different day. Can't believe the cheesy gordita crunch is up to five fifty. I eat better. I have abs. You do. I'll never forget the, the earlier in the week when you said to me, "Please tell me you've never bought a taquito from a gas station." <laughs> <laughs> God, well, so, that was oh, awesome. Hold on, real quick, before we get to the best bet. So, like, you, you know how when the temperature changes, I don't know if this happens everywhere else, but it doesn't happen at Dan because he lives in L.A. It's 85 every day. But, like, when the temperature changes, like, you, the air pressure in your tire goes down because the air gets colder at night. So you wake up in the morning, all of a sudden, like, your tire's a little bit deflated. Well, one tire yeah. keep doing that. So there is a gas station that gives free air. Which, oh, by the way, charging people to fill their tires with air is the stupidest thing ever. Like, oh, my God. I don't agree and with I that. Keep paying. But anyway, so I went to go fill my tire with air, and there was some jack wagon parked in this spot right next to the air pump, but wasn't using the air. In fact, this fat bastard was inside getting food. And so what did I do? Well, I backed my car up within six inches of him, right? So he couldn't move and went and filled oh, my air, my, my, my car tire with air. And, you know, he, he just walks right past me and gets in his car with the food in his hand and everything else. I'm like, listen, pal, you want to go inside and get a taquito off a freaking roller, you slob? Just move your car over. So people can park and get air. We're the most inconsiderate country in the planet. Like, my God. Like, just move your car. There was like 12 spots open right next to him. And he stood, he stayed right in the air pump spot. So then I took my sweet ass time filling up my tire and took my sweet ass time getting back in the car. You know, slowly drove off when he tried to pull out. It's a joke in there somewhere. I'll tell you what. I'm staying away from gas stations in Georgia. Brian oh. Power, have you ever eaten a taquito off a gas station roll? I have not. I've eaten some terrible things. 
I've done some terrible things, quite frankly, in this life. But no, I have never ordered a taquito from a gas station. All right. You know what I have done, though? Made a bad bet. What I will do? Well, yeah, I did last night. Yes, thank you for reminding me. I'm not happy about it, okay? But you know what I'm going to do tonight? Uh, Speaking of teams that we probably shouldn't bet on but will, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. They're getting getting a decent number tonight at the Staples Center against the Lakers. Uh, Dan, by the way, I'm wearing my Phillies attire here for you and we're betting the Sixers for you trying to make you feel good okay he doesn't okay Dan is disagreeing with this play in my ear but we're gonna undaunted here's the key okay yes the Sixers are shorthanded they still have Paul George though the Lakers Mark Zitto have not won a game by more than seven points all year so why would you lay eight here look I think there's an overreaction Tyrese Maxey is now out gonna be out for an extended period Mm -hmm. of time right um so Uh, th- I think there's an overreaction in the line. The Lakers are also doing something in a, in a situationally in a spot that you and I always like to play against. They're just coming off a five-game road trip where they went one and four with their only win over the lowly Raptors. Um, so they've been out on the road for a long time here. And when they f- that first game back home is a spot where they're a little bit flat, right? They just they get home and they relax and they're finally like in their own beds and everything else. You know, it's usually the second game after the road trip that you really want to fire on them, which sets up nicely for us, by the way, with the Lakers. Um, you know, obviously not tonight, but on on on, uh, on Sunday uh, when they host Toronto again uh, in a rematch. So, all that said, uh, I will we'll, we'll look at the Philadelphia 76ers here. There are eights out there. I saw some eight and a halfs earlier. Get the best number you can. But as BP said, mm-hmm. this is not a Lakers team that separates from anybody. Anthony Davis is still dealing with a foot injury. LeBron James played a season high, had a season high in points, and I think in minutes and in shooting, and they still lost 131 to 114 to Memphis their last time out. So this isn't exactly a great Lakers team at this point in time. Not enough that they should be laying almost double digits um, to a team that is, is Dan Alexander might get mad, but that's as talented and deep and well coached as the Sixers. Am I being aggressive, Dan? Maybe, maybe they're not all that, but nonetheless, um, yeah. <laughs> So we're going to take the Sixers here with the points. Um, again, look on the bright side. If they're getting their doors blown off by halftime, you guys can go to bed. Or just keep drinking. One or the other. Tell you what, I don't think they're not. Uh, what, what, what? You lost me at just keep drinking. Anyway, that is our show best bet. Philadelphia 76ers plus the points against the Lakers. The too long, didn't listen version is the Lakers aren't built to lay a big number like this. So that will do it. For the morning wager. If you have not already smashed that like button, shame on you. You should do that right now and then head on over to wt.buzz slash mz where the fine Mark Zinno is cashing tickets uh, each and every day as the song goes. My college card will be up tonight. My entire college card will be up this evening. So Mine will be, be up, up by this night. afternoon. Well, go All ahead. Right. Me to the Subscribe to the Major Talk YouTube channel. And comment down below with your favorite bets for Friday, for Saturday, for Sunday. Do me a favor. Go comment on the other shows and say the morning wager is better than that. That's what I want you to do. Go to the other shows on Wager Talking. You guys feel like the morning wagers are better than That's the comment I want you to leave on the other ones. Forget ours. If you're going to leave a comment, go to another show and say the morning wager is better. I can't believe it. There you go. Especially when that dude's on. Stop it. Be nice.